Good evening. My name is Vedrana Subotic. I am the music director of Intermezzo Chamber Music Series. And thank you for joining us tonight for our number five of six concerts for our 2020 season. Uh, we are with this concert celebrating the 250th um, centennial of Beethoven's birth and dedicated the entire program to his magnificent cello sonatas. The first cello sonata that you just heard was composed along with the second one, which is coming up in 1796, which is some 200, over 210 years ago. And um, this was at the time when Beethoven was still enjoying a concert career. So in fact, he composed the, these for himself and uh, performed them at the court of King Friedrich of Prussia with the king's cello teacher. So Beethoven and the king's cello teacher, the king was an amateur cellist, gave a premiere of these two sonatas. Um, of course, Beethoven's piano at the time wasn't as fabulous as this one that I'm playing tonight, which has come to us courtesy of Skip Danes and Danes Music. So thank you, Skip, for once again providing a beautiful instrument for us pianists in Salt Lake in Utah and beyond. And um, our series, Intermezzo, is a concert series that usually takes place in a concert hall and um, to a live audience. And this is our first live streamed season. Um, so uh, we are here in partnership with our friends at Gallivan Center, which have graciously allowed us to use their space for these concerts, and with our collaborators at Excellence in the Community, who are supporting our live streaming tonight. So thank you, everyone. And I hope you enjoy this second of the five Beethoven cello sonatas.
And that was the second of the early Opus 5 sonatas, which are generally thought uh, of as his early period. As I said earlier, during the time when he was still concertizing, he was still relatively young and healthy and uh, celebrated for his pianistic abilities. Um, another interesting thing about these two sonatas in particular is that if they're not the first, they're certainly among the very first sonatas where the piano part was written out um, along with the cello part because um, cello sonata developed a little bit behind the violin sonata and so it was customary in earlier 18th century to have um, chord symbols and to allow the keyboardist to improvise quite a bit. And it's a very long music history tradition which would bore everyone to death. So I'm just going to skip right over that and talk a little bit about the third sonata in A major, which is possibly the best known of the five sonatas and um, was composed in 1808 during what is generally thought of as Beethoven's middle and sometimes called heroic period. Um, 1808 was also the year during which he composed his trios, Opus 70, including the famous Ghost Trio, his Choral Fantasy, and his fifth and sixth symphonies were also premiered in 1808. So he was quite at the pinnacle of his um, uh, power as a composer and a pianist. Um, and this particular sonata is the first sonata where the piano and cello have an equal uh, part, equally difficult, equally demanding, equal dialogue uh, conversation, if you will, musically. Um, it was customary for at least his violin sonatas to be published as sonatas for piano with violin. And so the cello sonatas would have been sonatas for piano with cello. But here in this third sonata, uh, we are now seeing um, an equal relationship between the two instruments.
The next two sonatas um, are from Opus 102, which is considered Beethoven's last late period. And um, they represent an introduction into Beethoven's new um, model of composition and a newfound obsession with everything that is interesting, beautiful, um, intriguing, and complex about counterpoint and fugal writing. So both of these sonatas um, feature a final movement which is based on the idea of imitation, close imitation. So less of a dialogue in a sense in which we heard it in the first three sonatas, but more of a an overlapping um, layered conversation where there's almost more than two voices going on at the same time um, in some moments. Uh, the two sonatas also uh, open up into Beethoven's introspective mode. Um, as you will see, the beautiful slow movements are quite hauntingly tender and beautiful and philosophical and uh, explore, I think, what plagued Beethoven towards the end of his life, which was the... Uh, humanity's endless quest for meaning of it all. So as such, the fourth sonata is the first of the two. It is in the key of C major, and it begins introspectively, whereas the fifth sonata begins very heroically. So again, Beethoven was a master of placing two works for the same instrument, same medium, but somehow with his ingenious approach and creative genius, um, able to contrast the music and the ideas and the materials in such a way that there is almost nothing similar between the two pieces which share the same year of composition, composition which was 1815. And at this point, Beethoven was very much deaf um, and um, could not have really imagined what these pieces would have sounded like in concert performance.
Thank you. 